Good afternoon, Hoops fans. Nick Allen Jr. alongside Jason Winchell and Mike Lang. We are live here in Dover, Delaware from your DIAA headquarters for your Selection Friday Unified Girls and Boys Basketball Bracket Reveal. Guys, it's that time of the year yet again. Excited? Ready to drive in? This is what we waited for since uh, the beginning of December, Nick, so uh, let's get to it, right? Let's get right into it. We are going to start with the Unified Basketball Bracket Reveal. So without further ado, let's dive in. And here we go. Our first matchup revealed for the basketball postseason, and it will be in the unified bracket. It will be the third-seeded Appaquinamic Jaguars. What a run they had in the Bob Carpenter Center last season, and they're going to be welcoming in the 14th seed from Milford, the Buccaneers. Unified game is always a lot of fun. If you get a chance to go out and watch them, it's worth the, uh, the, the uh, time, a lot worth the time. It was so much fun last year. And uh, the Bucks are coming after you, Jags, so you guys better be ready. Jaguars, again, what a performance they had in last year's postseason. They're going to look to replicate something similar. Going to be a tough, though, task with the Bucks visiting from Milford. Now let's take us into another matchup here in round one of your unified basketball bracket, and that'll be the 13th seed, Middletown Cavaliers, who will make the trip to Caesar Rodney to take on the fourth seeded Riders. Guys, Caesar Rodney coming off a heck of a football season unified in the fall, looking to double up here in the winter. They get the four seed. Yeah, and that's a tough environment to play down there at Caesar Rodney. It's going to be a fun atmosphere, a uh, great crowd, and, uh, you know, Middletown's a tough team. It's going to be a interesting round one matchup. Middletown the 13, Caesar Rodney the four, another round one matchup in your unified basketball bracket. We'll keep it rolling here, staying with round one. It'll be your 12th seed, the William Penn Colonials, traveling to take on the five-seeded Mount Pleasant Green Knights. So William Penn gets the 12, Mount Pleasant the five. Another intriguing matchup in round one. Well, Nick, you know the uh, NCAA bas basketball tournament, a 12 always beats a five. There's four of them. And Mount Pleasant better be ready. They don't want to be the five-seed that goes down here against William Penn. So I'm expecting a battle up there in Penny Hill. Yeah, that is going to be a good one, 12 and 5. We'll keep it rolling here in round number one with your 11 seed, the Woodbridge Blue Raiders, and they're going to travel to take on the Highlanders, your sixth seed from McCain. So a fantastic matchup with the 11 and 6, Woodbridge and McCain. A hen loping first blue hen uh, battle up there at McCain as uh, Woodbridge travels up north. This is going to be a fantastic matchup. And uh, two great teams uh, playing each other. And again, this one underway February 27th, round one of your unified bracket. Let's keep it rolling here in round one. And grabbing that 10 seed is going to be the Seaford Blue Jays, where they will meet up with the Cape Henlopen Vikings down in Lewis. The Vikings, they get the 7 seed, 10 Seaford, 7 Cape Henlopen. little Henlopen conference uh, matchup right in Benny Mitchell's backyard and. uh you know, they're two of the better-looking logos I have seen, Nick, with the uh, Blue Jay and the uh, Cape Viking. We've seen a few Vikings, but that Blue Jay is pretty sweet looking. They got a good logo there. February 27th, round 27th. one, Seaford and Cape Penlope, and that is your 10-7 matchup here in the unified bracket. And that will take us to round two, and let's get to the teams that have earned themselves first-round buys, and that is going to be Indian River. They grabbed the two seats, so they won't be in action until March 3rd, but what a season it was for the Indians to grab that two spot. Yeah, and they'll be meeting uh, another Henlopen team in either Seaford or That's Cape, right. and I'm sure they know both of those teams. And uh, Great atmosphere down there at IR, seeing a game down there, and uh, another one should be, should be fun for the, the right to, uh, to move on. You said it. Indian River. They grabbed that two spot. Congratulations to Indian River. And then our 9-8 matchup, grabbing that nine spot, the Polytech Panthers. And they're going to take on Newark Charter. The Patriots get the eight. So a 9-8 matchup, Polytech and Newark Charter. That's going to be round one on February 27th. That's a great matchup. And normally they are when the eight and nine seed uh, match up. This is going to be a, a great atmosphere down there at Newark Charter. And it's going to be exciting to see uh, who goes on to face the top seed. And let's find out who that top seed will be, and it is the Dover Senators. So Dover grabbed the top spot in the entire unified basketball bracket. They will have to wait to be in action until March 3rd as well, but they'll take it as the number one overall seed in the tournament. They put together a heck of a season, and they will be rewarded with that top seed and a home game. Congratulations to the Senators on all earning that top top spot in the unified uh, bracket. And, uh, you know, they'll get a tough matchup in that uh, when they face that 8-9 winner. So there you have it. 
are your top seed, the Dover Senators. And now we'll take an overall look here at the unified bracket. Guys, up top you have Dover, up number one. And then number two will be Indian River. See if we can uh, zoom in a little bit for everybody at home. Dover up top, Newark Charter. And then, of course, you see the Rem Indian River, that second seed. They get a, a first round buy as well. So the top two seeds gaining buys. And it is going to be a battle in round one and then throughout the rest of the tournament. Yeah, should be a good one. Unified sports, it's a great uh, endeavor, and it's a, a, it's always a lot of fun. Uh, thanks to Special Olympics Delaware and the DIAA for sponsoring Unified Sports. And again, that all gets underway February 27th, round one in the Unified Basketball Brackets, and mark that on your calendars just around the corner. So Dover, your top seed, Indian River, your two seed, and that'll do it for part one of the bracket reveal. So Unified Basketball at home we are going to pause for 30 seconds we're going to swap the brackets out and we'll be right back with your girls bracket coming to you live here from the DIAA And welcome back live to Dover, Delaware, your DIAA headquarters for Selection Friday. Nick Allison, Drady, Mike Lang, and Jason Winchell. Nick Halliday here as well. And we are ready to dive in now to our girls' brackets. Again, Unified has been completed. Dover grabbing the top seed of your Unified basketball bracket. So with that, let's dive into the girls' bracket here, guys, and let's get started. And your first matchup for round number one will be the 24-seeded Hill. And they earn themselves a matchup with the ninth seeded Smyrna Eagles. So, Tower Hill, they get the 24. They're going to have to head down to Smyrna to take on the Eagles, round one starting on March 1st. Yeah, good job by uh, Tower. Uh, sneaking in there, but hey, you're in, right? And that's, that's the important thing. And Smyrna's had a fantastic season. This should be a great matchup uh, between the Hillers and Eagles. And uh, congratulations to both teams. And I think we're sticking around. We're going to see who they move on to play, right? That's right, we will. So there you go, our first matchup revealed. And the winner of this one earns themselves a matchup with the eighth-seeded AI DuPont Tigers. So AI gets a first-round bye. They grab that eighth seed. They'll be in action at home on March 3rd with the winner of Smyrna and Tower Hill. Yeah, 19-1 this year under the direction of uh, second-year coach Lucky Price. And, uh, you know, Rob, Rob's got a, uh, a great r roster out there led by the 1,000-point scorer, My My Trader. Uh, it's good for AI. Two years ago, they didn't have a team. Uh, they, they rebuilt beginning of last year, and, and this year they're 19-1. Congratulations to the Tigers. They're fun to watch. They're in the Blue Hen Championship tomorrow against Apo at St. Mark's. If you get a chance, you want to go out and watch AI before the tournament, that's a great chance. And Apo, that's a great chance to do it. That's right, you have to wait till March 3rd. They get a first-round bye, your eight seed here in the bracket, and they will get the winner of Tower Hill and Smyrna. So let's get back to our next matchup revealed, and it will be 23rd seed, the force from Wilmington Charter, making the trip to take on Delaware Military Academy, who grabbed that 10 seed. So Wilmington Charter and DMA, that's looking like a good matchup uh, on March 1st in round one. Yeah, it's a Diamond State Conference matchup. These two met during the regular season uh, in, in a close uh, game that DMA won. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, that matchup. It's going to be a good one and a good opening round matchup in, uh, up at Seahawk Country. 23-4 taking on the 10 Seahawks in round one on March 1st. And the winner of that matchup will earn themselves a game with the seven-seeded Jaguars from Appaquinimix. So they get the conference championship and they get that second goal that Coach was talking about, and that is a first-round buy in the state tournament, Jay. They get the seven seed. Yeah, when he came on our show uh, a couple weeks ago, he said that was, uh, like you said, goal one and goal two was to have the uh, buy in the first round. They get it. They're uh, the Flight Aid champs, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, 
you know, that's going to be a tough matchup, uh, whether they get DMA or Charter, but yeah. uh, APO is a very talented team and, and deserve the seventh seed. And you heard of two first two goals crossed off. That next one is state championship. We'll see if the Jags can make a run. It starts for them on March 3rd. Our next matchup here in the girls' bracket will be round one, number 22, the Blue Jays. Seaford grabbing that 22 spot, and they're going to take on the Woodbridge Blue Raiders, who have that 11 spot. So Seaford and Woodbridge going to meet in round one here, guys. Yeah, Seaford gets in with some bonus points. Congratulations to them. They get in there. Uh, they get to meet their conference uh, sisters in Woodbridge, and that's a tough team they have over there at Woodbridge with uh, Reagan Robertson. Um, and uh, she's not alone. There's a couple other players over there, Peyton Keeler. This is a good Woodbridge team. It's going to be a tough matchup for the Blue Jays, but this is a wide-open tournament, and you never know. You just never know. Right now, too much travel there, at least for that one, no. on March 1st in round number one. So Seaford and Woodbridge, they'll go at it in the winter. We'll get number six, the Ox from Archmere. Mike, you grabbed that sixth spot. What a year it was for Archmere. It was a great year, and we talked about no travel in the first round. Lots of travel in the second <laughs> round for either the winner, uh, either Seaford or Woodbridge. Uh, Archmere is 16-4 and four this year. It's one of their best seasons they've ever had. Diamond State champions. Great job by Coach Dan Pisani. They have great inside presence on that team, and they're, they're really kind of a balanced team. But uh, between Lucy Oliver and Sa Sarah Denning down low, they can dominate teams inside. Um, they're fun to watch, and uh, congratulations to the Hawks. And, and uh, it should be a good game on uh, the third. So again, Seaford and Woodbridge, the winner of that one, will get Archmere the sixth spot on March 3rd. So congratulations to the Hawks. They get a first round bye in this year's postseason. Our next matchup, round one, your 21 seed will be the Middletown Cavaliers as they will take on and make the trip to take on the 12th seeded Delmarva Christian Royals. So again, Middletown, Delmarva Christian. On paper, this is another great matchup, guys. A lot of people might know, might not know a lot about Delmarva Christian to be up here every year and, make, and trying to make a run in the postseason. Yeah, year in and year out, they're up there in, in the girls' brackets. Uh, another outstanding season for them. And Middletown, they were competing with, uh, you know, a couple teams for that Floyd A title, very solid team. Uh, they'll make the trip down uh, south. And uh, I, I think that's one, just looking on paper, that looks like a great matchup. Cavaliers and the Royals, 21-12 and 12 in round one on March 1st. And the winner. We'll take on the fifth seed and defending state champion, Caravelle Buccaneers. So, again, Caravelle had some girls graduate last year off of that state championship run. They reload here, have a first-round bye, and that five seed. Yeah, they played a very tough schedule. They played a lot of the top teams, went out, went out of state and played. Uh, you know, and the defending champs are right there, right in the perfect position, sitting there in the five seed. So a first round bye for Caravelle again, trying to make another run that we saw out of them last season. That'll take us back to round one in our next matchup. The 20 seed Howard Wildcats going to take on the 13th seed Polytech Panthers. So Mike Howard and Polytech in your 2013. Yeah, I had a chance to see Howard real early in the season. So it's been kind of back way back in the recesses of my brain. They're a scrappy team, uh, a lot of hustle on that team. And they're going to get a Polytech team that went, 15 and 5 this year, Nick. Last year, 5 and 15. So a 10 game turnaround uh, okay. for the Lady Panthers. Had a chance to see them in St. Mark's the other night. They have some real talent on that team, some size and some shooters, and they're going to be a uh, it's going to be a tough opponent for Howard. But uh, that's why we play the game. Again, this one on March 1st as well. Howard gets the 20. Polytech, your 13 seed. They meet in round number one. The winner though. We'll take on the four seed and another first round by this time for the Tattnall Hornets. What a squad they put together. Emma Kirby scoring her th thousandth point this season. She's been a great leader for them. They get a four seed and a first round by. Yeah, another team um, with a, a first year coach, a first year head coach uh, at Tattnall. They've done. They really haven't missed a beat. Um, and we mentioned Emma. She, she's not alone. They have a solid, solid starting lineup. Um, and, at, and Tattnall is a great home court advantage. Uh, you know, it's going to be loud in there, and they're going to have a, a, a lot of students out watching that game. Um, so it's, that should be a good one uh, there between uh, the Hornets and uh, who's the other? I can't remember. Howard and Polytech. Polytech. Or Polytech or um, Howard. Yeah, that's so going to be a good one. So it 20, be a good one. Howard, 13, Polytech. The winner. You see so many teams, we'll you forget <laughs> who's where, right? The winner will get fourth seed. That is Tattnall. To cap it off with a nice run in the playoffs as well. Then for round one, your 19th seed, the Dover Senators.
going to make the trip up to Pike Creek to take on the Spartans from St. Mark's in your 1914 matchup on March 1st. Jay, what stands out to you about this one? Dover played in that tough Henlopen North uh, this year. Uh, they grabbed the 19th spot, and they're going to travel up to St. Mark's, uh, the 14th uh, seeded team. That's going to be a tough matchup. Uh, two very good teams going at it, and uh, I, I think that's one of those games that, that's a toss-up in the first round. That's where you could potentially see an upset 19-14. Dover 19, St. Mark's 14. And the winner earns themselves a game to Lewis to take on Cape Henlopen and the third seeded Vikings. And the Vikings for grabbing that third seed. I mean, what a season. I'll let you guys dive into it. But flying maybe a little bit under the radar with some of these other teams uh, sitting atop the standings here in girls basketball. What a season for the Vikings from Cape. They've won 18 straight, Nick. 18 straight after an 0-2 start. A very young team uh, came together after an 0-2 start and uh, went on to win their last 18 games. Are the Henlope and North champions and uh, deserving of that three seed. It's going to be a tough matchup for the St. Mark's Dover winner to play uh, those Vikings. 19 Dover, 14 St. Mark's winner gets the third seed, Cape Henlope, who will wait to be in action, of course, until March 3rd. Keep it rolling here in round one, and the 18th seed goes to Early College High School, and the Hornets going to take on the 15th seeded St. Elizabeth Vikings, another girls team that's usually up there year in and year out, making runs for state championships. Early College, St. E's, 18 to 15 here in round one. Now, you, you talk about under the radar. This might be the most under the radar team that we've talked about. Early College, great job by the Hornets. Won a lot of games this year, maybe 17, I think. They were they had a lot of wins. Uh, they're going to have a tough uh, first round assignment. At St. E's, I know the Vikings were 10 and 10 this year. Uh, they had some injuries, um, but they have still have some talent on that team, and that's a tough place to play. You know, the crowd's right on top of you, and the St. E's Center is a great atmosphere, and it, it should be a good one. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations to the Hornets, uh, your first appearance in the tournament. They grabbed the 18 spot, St. E's the 15 spot. What does the winner get? Well, they get a trip to Wilmington to take on the Red Raiders from Ursuline. Ursuline putting together a phenomenal season. A lot of young talent as well as some experienced girls on that team. They've got a great recipe for success. They are the two seed and just one loss all season long. Yeah, they lost to a uh, Sanford game that we saw on February 10. And they, they do have the, the players that everybody's been talking about, the, the two eighth graders. But they are not alone. They, you know, There's a senior that's like the glue on that team. Uh, talk about tough places to play. Doesn't get much tougher than Ursuline. That you're right. Players are. Uh, it's very loud in that gym, and it gets very crowded in there. And it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's a great place to watch a game. And um, the one advantage St. E's might have is they play there every year, so they might. You know, they're used to it. Uh, early college might be a little new experience for them if they happen to uh, to to get by that first round. But uh, congratulations to the Raiders up in the the two spot. Ursuline at the two. That'll take us to our last matchup of round number one, 17-seeded Red Lion, going to take on the 16-seeded St. George's Hawks, 17-16. Again, both of these teams, this is going to be a highly competitive matchup on March 1st. Yeah, Red Lion had an outstanding season, and they get up there as the 17th seed. They go to that tough St. George's team, and uh, it's going to be a great environment down there at St. George's. And, and like you said, 17-16, and 16, they're toss-up games. I think this one's a toss-up game as well. And that'll be a good one. That'll take us to our top seed of the tournament. And your overall top dog this year in 2023 postseason will be the Sanford Warriors. They grabbed the top seed. Mike, you mentioned the matchup back on February 10th with Ursuline. The winner of that game might have earned themselves the number one seed. Sanford got the win. They looked great in that contest. And now they're sitting atop the bracket. Yeah, those top four seeds were all very close to one another. So that win by Sanford probably pushed them up over the top. Great team, experienced team. Mm -hmm. Coach Thompson always does a great job down there at Sanford, and uh, they deserve the top seed, and, uh, you know, they're, they're ready. It's going to be a great tournament. I can't wait. It is going to be a great tournament. So now, now let's take an overall view here, as you can see it on your screen. Again, your top dog will be Sanford at the one seed, and, of course, two seed goes to Ursuline. You see these teams here, your top eight with first-round buys, Archmere, Cape, Apo, Caravelle, Tattnall, and AI to round out the rest of the top eight. Anything stand out to you guys here before we move on? Uh, so I think a lot of good matchups, uh, you know, for, and uh, in the first round, and then we'll go from there. As always, going to be a great one, Mike. Yeah, we're ready to go. Uh, I, you know, it starts on the first. I was kind of hoping it started on the 28th, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we need another day to get ready, rest up, 
and be ready to go on Wednesday. Well, there you have it. Your top overall seed for the girls' bracket here in 2023 will be the Sanford Warriors. Ursula and the Red Raiders grab your two seed. Again, all the action going to get started on March 1st. We're going to now take another quick, short 30-second break. When we come back, the boys' bracket reveal coming up. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back live inside your DIAA headquarters here in Dover, Delaware. It's Selection Friday, and we are here bringing you your basketball bracket reveals. We started with Unified. We got through the girls' bracket, and now it's time to finish off with a bang. It's time to talk a little bit about the boys' bracket and reveal our seedings. Top 24 coming at you right now. Talk about the parity in boys' basketball this year. I can't wait to see these brackets. Again, Andrew, these are all new stuff. We have not seen them ahead of time, so as we reveal them, we will see them for the first time. Excited as well. It has been, as Jason said, a very competitive season in terms of boys' high school basketball here in the first state. And let's dive in and see what kind of matchups that we have for the postseason. And it all gets started in round number one. Your 24th seed will be the Cape Henlope and Vikings, and they get to open up with a trip to Bear, Delaware to take on the ninth seeded Caravel Bucks in round one. Wow, guys, this is going to be a great matchup. Just the first revealed matchup here today. The 24 9 J Cape Henlopen gets that 24 seed, but there was a lot of, you know, points looking at and stuff, et cetera, with a little bit of tie we had earlier. Uh, well, yeah, if, I, if I'm right, when I was doing it, I had a seven way tie from 20 on. So we'll, we'll, I don't, I'll, we'll see how that panned out. But uh, I'll tell you what. That's a great first-round matchup. I can't wait to see that one. Uh, Cape Henlopen played in the tough Henlopen North, had a, also took a trip up to Appaquinnemick and Carvel. They played the who's who's schedule this year. Mark, Coach Tobin wasn't afraid to play every, everybody, and uh, uh, there they are sitting at the ninth seed. And that is going to be a fun matchup in round number one. Again, all this gets underway on February 28th. And the winner of that will get a matchup with your team. The first reveal will have a first round bye. That's going to be your eight seed Sanford Warriors. So the Sanford grabs the number one seed in the girls, and they get a first round bye in the boys as well under head coach Ty Perry in his second season. They grab the eight spot. Yeah, Sanford, another one who had a, a great year. Uh, played, played one of the toughest uh, schedules in the state. And you look at that. They're going to get either Kate or Caravel making the trip to Sanford. Wow, that's a, a second round matchup that's must see. And a rematch, Caravel and Sanford went at it just a few weeks ago down in Bear, Delaware, maybe a week and a half ago, so could be looking at a potential rematch between those two teams. So Sanford gets your eight seed, Cape your 24, Caravel your nine, the winner of Cape and Caravel, they get Sanford in round number two. Our next match up here in your boys' bracket will be the Silver Eagles from Hudson. They grab the 23 spot, and they will take on your 10 seed, the Hawks from St. George's. Yeah, Nick, uh... Apparently the boys start on Tuesday, so I am going to have some basketball to watch on Tuesday. Lack of sleep, what can I tell you? Uh, Hodgson and St. George's a little flight A battle here. Not too far from each other, what, 15 minutes? Uh, they know each other well. Uh, two really well-coached teams, and congratulations to the Silver Eagles getting one of those tiebreakers there at the end. And uh, St. George's had quietly had a really good season. Uh, we did have a chance to see them at the SL24, and um, it's – it should be a good one. The fighting matchup is always a always a good one. Had a chance to be there at Bones Retirement for that game against Haver de Grace, and that place was filled up, so they can pack it over there at St. George's. That is going to be a great spot for a round one matchup between the Silver Eagles and the Hawks. So that's your 23 and 10. Let's see who the winner of this matchup will meet up with. It'll be the seventh seed, the Colonials from William Penn. So the winner of that one will head to Newcastle to take on head coach Gary Lumpkin and company. Colonials putting together a nice season as well this year. Yeah, and my guess is if you talk to uh, talk to Gary, 
he probably would not want to be playing a Flight A team in his first game, but that's the way the bracket works out. I mean, Hudson and St. George's both have seen William Penn. They know what the Colonials bring. We know what the Colonials bring. A lot of energy, a lot of discipline, and it's a tough environment to play, and we love streaming games there because it's so much fun in that gym. Uh, the, I'm a fl Another Flight A battle, sign me up, man. I, I, that's an awesome matchup. And that is going to be a good one again. William Penn get a first round bye. They'll be in action at home on March 2nd. So let's reveal our next matchup here in round one of the boys' bracket. It will be the 22 seeded Blue Raiders from Woodbridge. Not a far trip for them as they'll be taking on the Bulldogs from Laurel, who grabbed that 11 spot. Had a chance to check out Laurel a few times this year. They've impressed me. Woodbridge grabbing that 22 spot. Haven't seen much of them, but you look at the schedule. They have some nice wins as well. Yeah, it's a Henlope and South battle. Uh, you know, Woodbridge played Laurel twice and Seaford twice. You know, picked up a lot of bonus points there. Uh, get in as your 22 seed, and they're familiar with Laurel. Played them twice during the regular season. It's going to be a fun, fun atmosphere down there and Laurel for that first round matchup. February 28th, the Dogs and the Blue Raiders will go at it in round one. The winner, though, they get themselves a trip to Tower Hill to take on the defending state champions, Dean and Dylan Shepard and the Hillers, who grabbed that sixth spot and a first round bye. Yeah, and they get to play in their friendly co uh, confines. It's going to be a it's going to be a long trip for one of those uh, Henlope and South teams. But uh, I'll tell you what, that could be uh, wh whoever wins that Woodbridge Laurel game, they're they're they're, they're going to get a good matchup with Tower Hill. I can't wait. That's going to be a, a fantastic second round matchup. Yeah, yes, it is. And the Hillers coming off of a state championship in games with the Bob. Like, I've never seen what a shooting <laughs> performance. We'll see if the Hillers can do it. Round two here in the 2023 postseason. So the Hillers, they get a bye in the sixth seed. And that'll take us to our next matchup here in the boys' bracket. It'll be your 21 seed, Tattnall Hornets. So Tattnall going to get in the girls and the boys as well here. They grab the 21 seed. And they're going to take on a very interesting 12 seed in the Polytech Panthers. A lot of talent on Polytech and one of the better teams, in my opinion, in the state. It's going to be a good one with them in Tattnall. Yeah, Nick, I think Davis Bland just made another three-pointer when we weren't looking. <laughs> um, yeah, Tattnall, uh, kind of a, a, a quiet 21 seed this year. They play, play some tough teams in Friends and uh, in Sanford out there in, in the Independent and, and, and Tower. I can't forget you know, Tower Hill, Friends, and Sanford. That was a great conference this year. Really got them some bonus points, got them ready for this tournament. And uh, Polly, tough environment, tough players. I mean, they had Darrell Little, who was one of the most impressive players I saw all season. And uh, and, and Kyle Gamber. Yeah. Th this is a team with a lot of talent on it. Polly's going to be a tough, tough out, especially at home. But uh, Tattnall's battle-tested. We'll see how the Hornets make out on uh, Tuesday night. 21-12, and 12, Tattnall and Polly Tech. And the winner of that matchup will travel to Apoquinimic to take on the fifth-seeded Apo Jaguars under head coach Tom Purse. Another great year for Apoquinimic. It seems like they're always in the mix year in and year out. And this year, a first-round bye for the Jags. Yeah, they're athletic. They're long. They're quick. They, they like to go up and down the floor. Uh, so we'll see how things go for, for Apo. They've, they've had a, a couple games this year where you're wondering, you're scratching your head, but most of the time they've been right there, you know, and that's a, that's a tough, tough team every year. Every year, Coach Purse has them in contention, and that's, uh, that tells you he, he knows what he's doing, and they got some athletes down there below the canal. Tattle and Polytech, the winner, gets Apoquinimit your five seed. So the Jaguars will be in action on March 2nd after the first round bye. Let's reveal our next matchup in round number one. It's going to be Del Castle who grabs that 20 spot. The Cougars going to travel to take on the 13-seeded Wilmington Friends Quakers. So the Quakers made some noise in the fall, brought home a first state championship in some time. Now they get the 13 seed here in the winter for basketball, and they're going to welcome the Cougars in round one. A lot of football players also playing right. on that basketball team at Wellington Friends. So uh, there they are. They get a, a home game against a interesting Del Castle yes. team. Don't look at their record. They played a, a, a lot of good teams this year, played a lot of good teams tough. Uh, it's going to be one of those interesting first-round matchups now. I see it, see it here. I mean, that, wow. <laughs> That's just we amazing. have some good ones. Yeah. I'm going to have to stop, stay after, and go over some of these. <laughs> but Del Castle, Wilmington Friends, you're 20 and 13 on February 28th. So the winner between the Cougars and the Quakers will travel to take on Salazianum. So Sally's grabs that four spot, a nice strong finish to their season. You know, usually 
typically, as always, right, they go through that gauntlet of a schedule through the first half out of state, get those bonus points right, and here they are through the second half of the season, and now they get a four spot. Yeah, they, they had a tough last nine-game in-state schedule and went one eight out of nine with their only – Yeah, with all, their only loss being to Sanford. They beat Howard. They beat some of the – Tower Hill. They beat some great teams in that stretch. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's you know it's a tough schedule, a very good team, an experienced team. Uh, you know, and coach has them playing well, and uh, but it won't be any. It won't be an easy task because, like, like I said, this tournament, the parity is just so what? It's so great this year. Wide open, almost yep. you could say against the Lazy Anum. They grabbed that four spot, a run to the national or national champ to the state championship <laughs> last wow. year. Who knew? Round up, you know, ran into a buzzsaw in Tower Hill again. Not sure who could have beat the Hillers last year in that game, but Sally's looking to get back to the Bob Carpenter Center the here in 2023. <laughs> so Sally's, they get the four spot. Our next matchup revealed is going to be your 19 seeded Lake Forest in round one. We'll travel to Indian River, your 14 seed. So the Spartans and, La and Indian River going at it here on February 28th. That's another interesting matchup in round one. Yeah, another Hemlop and South battle. Two teams that played each other twice during a regular season. Uh, Lake, I think, was at 9 and 11, if I'm not mistaken. Indian River, I think, was the other way around. So these teams are very evenly matched. Uh, the five spots in the brackets, really, you're looking at bonus points to make the difference there. But, um, you know, when, these te when teams know each other that well and get together, expect a battle. I, I'd, I'd say throw the records out. There you go. 19 Lake Forest, 14 Indian River. The winner of this one will earn themselves a matchup with your third-seeded Howard Wildcats. So Howard had a chance to see them. Obviously one of the better teams in the state. Athletic like to get out and run under head coach Rayson Matthews Sr. They grabbed the three-seed here, guys, and a first-round bye. Seen Howard uh, at least a half dozen times this year. Very, very athletic team. And you mentioned they like to run. They play defense. Uh, they can shoot threes. They can go inside. They, they've got a little bit of everything, and, and they, uh, um, they, they've got designs on a state championship. I don't think they're looking past anybody, but I know they have a goal, and it's, it's, uh, it, it ends a lot later than March 2nd. Again, Lake Forest and Indian River, the winner. We'll have a matchup here up north, I should say, in Wilmington against the Howard Wildcats. So, Howard, they get your three seed, a first-round bye for the Howard School of Technology, and that'll take us – to our next matchup revealed, which will be the 18th seeded Hawks from Archmere taking on the 15th seeded Dover Senators. What a contrast, right? Archmere, slow it down, uh, very patient on the offense end, very great defensive team. Dover, a team that likes to push the pace. Uh, so that that's one of those interesting matchups. With which style wins out mm -hmm. on that day? Dover is at home, a little advantage there, but I'll tell you what. Uh, Arch, if Archmere can play their pace, this could be a very tough opening round game for Dover. Again, Harrow coming off a 1,000-point performance, I believe, last week, a week or two ago, in a game that he had 50 in yeah. as well, so a double milestone. 50-piece. 50-piece, that's right, and plus a 1,000-point scorer for Harrell and the Dover Senators. They get the 15th seed, a matchup with the 18th-seeded Ox from Archmere. All of that goes down on February 28th, but the winner of the Senators and the Ox will have to travel Seaford and take on the second seeded Blue Jays. I mean, what can you say about Seaford this year, right? I mean, he picked up almost where they left off last year, had a run to the Bob Carpenter Center, and then here they are again. Brent Rickinson Company have their eyes on a state championship. We said, we talked about the parity. They went 19 to 1. Uh, so, an outstanding season, like you said, by Seaford, uh, you know, and, and like you said, they left, they picked up where they left off last year. Uh, making it up to the semifinals. They get the two seed, uh, and they get the winner of Archmer Dover, which could be very interesting because, like I said, if that slow style of Archmer wins, they'll go down to a team, again, that likes to score points, like to push the pace. And if it's Dover, well, that's a track meet. <laughs> get, get your sh track shoes on, Nick. Yeah, that'll be a fun one Ooh. there, but it's the winner of that one taking on Seaford. So, Seaford, they get the two spot. Jay mentioned it, 19-1. and one. And they're going to grab the second seed here in the 2023 postseason. Now will take us to our final matchup of round number one. It's our 17-16 one here. And it's going to be the Mount Pleasant Green Knights taking on the 16th seeded Conrad Red Wolves. Again, not a lot of distance between these two teams that are going to battle it out up north. Mount Pleasant, the Green Knights putting together a decent season. They're going to take on Conrad as well. So both of those teams... Kind of evenly matched should be another good one in round one on February 28th. Yeah, Conrad, your Diamond State uh, champions this year. 
very athletic. Uh, they like to get out and go with a couple of different scores. Jalen Horsey, Kelsey Epps. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, they have uh, a Latro uh, right is playing for them. He's the freshman. And Mount Pleasant, a little more height. Uh, they also like to run. I expect this to be one of those track meet uh, type atmospheres. I think it's going to be a very, very close first round matchup. Um, and it, it should be a good one if you're looking for a first round game to go to. Comrades, Jim, not the biggest. You want to get your tickets early, but it should be a very entertaining uh, first round matchup. Yeah, great matchup. And it's going to be a heck of an environment, as you said, Mike, over there, there at Conrad. They pack them in for the it's, Red Wolves. It's, it's one of the most fun atmospheres in all of high school sports. So Red Wolves and the Green Knights, 17-16. And that'll take us to our top seed of the tournament. And it will be the Middletown Cavaliers. So the Cavs hanging around the top 10 at number one for majority of the season. They were able to cap it off in a big way when I was there last week in the game against Caravelle. So much talent um, on this team. Coach Ellie does a great job as well for the Cavaliers. Just what a season they put together, and they grabbed that top spot. Yeah, an unbelievable uh, season for the Cavs. We had them on. Uh, great guys. They're very nice. Uh, and, and they're just ready. They're ready. They want to take that next step under Coach Ali. Uh, they're going to have a, a great home court advantage down there in Middletown. That place is crazy, and I mean that in a good sense. Uh, it's a lot of fun to watch a game at Middletown. Um, it's it, they're going to have to uh, make make shots. And you know the, the one loss they had uh, against Louisiana, they just they just couldn't shoot anything. But other than that, this team's been on pretty much all year, and they're they have to be they're number one for a reason. That, that's one of the favorites right there in a, in a wide open year. But it should be a good one with either Mount or uh, Conrad. Yeah, you said it, Mike. Wide open year, but in a year with all this parity, Middletown put together a phenomenal season. They grabbed that number one seed and will sit atop the bracket. So now let's take an overall view here of the bracket. Your boys' basketball championships here presented by the DIAA. Middletown, your number one seed. Your number two seed, Seaford. Three seed, Howard. Four seed, Sally's. Five, Apo. Six, Tower Hill. Seven, William Penn and eight Sanford. So those eight teams will get first round buys. Guys, anything before we wrap up stand out to you ahead of the action that'll get underway on February 28th? Yeah, the 24-9 gives it, you know, you don't really want to look ahead too far, but you know, we're all going to do that. We're going to go home and fill out brackets and say, <laughs> wow, what, what could be in, in the quarterfinals or semifinal rounds? And uh, this should be a lot of fun. And this one starts Tuesday. I just can't wait. And this is going to be a lot of fun here. So there you have it, your boys, Unified and Girls. Bracket reveals live here from the DIAA headquarters in Dover. A special thanks to the DIAA and Donna for everything and allowing us to be able to put this together and all the work that they did it. And uh, we really appreciate it. And it's going to be a fantastic tour. And we were just happy to be a part of the reveal. And now it's time to get focused on some of the basketball action. That's right. Get to practice, everybody. So there you have it for Nick Allison, Drini, Jason Winchell, Mike Lang, and Nick Holliday. Thanks for tuning in. Your DIAA bracket reveal here on Selection Friday. All the action getting underway on February 28th. So make sure you go out and check out some games.